And you're on. All right. Larry. How you doing? Welcome. Good to see you. I feel like I haven't seen you in a while, and uh, it's only been a few weeks. Yeah. Uh, our guest, Larry Kendrick, uh, general manager of the Mojave Daily News, uh, and our partner in Aces Traces and everything related. Mm -hmm. um, man, we were hand in hand for three, four months, and then I don't see you for three weeks. What, yeah, what yeah. the heck? I know, I know. I mean, uh, we just talked to one of my employees as well, Nancy, and she was just saying, <laughs> I, I, where you been? I, I felt like we were family for, for such a long time, and then uh, for what, about three months, we were every week, every yeah. two weeks. So. Uh, meetings and for and hours you know and then we do the interviews which is basically the entire week um you know spent uh deliberating and all that stuff mm -hmm. so you spend all that time with somebody and then you're like all right we're done yeah see you in a year yeah yeah <laughs> well i think the last time we were together we were doing something similar to this too yeah, we're just doing some of the uh, we were trying to find a picture to reference it's like oh shoot we're doing the exact same thing uh just somewhere else right so, right uh, so. I'm, I'm glad to have you on i really enjoy uh the partnership that we have mm -hmm. Um, not just in terms of advertising business, things mm -hmm. like that, but the community. So um, all that comes through the paper. And it sounds like you got some big things going on over the paper. Yeah, we, we're pretty busy. I'm not going to lie. I know I've been very busy, um, you know, with being the president of Traces, general manager of the newspaper, uh, trying to be a community leader. Mm -hmm. um it's a full plate it's a full yeah. plate you know uh it's a full plate that will grow if you allow it oh so, yes if you yeah. don't say no it, it can it can get uh yeah, it'll it can, be eating it, off a plate this big here in no it's time, like a wildfire so. huh? yeah, yeah I, I um funny you say that i haven't had my boat up yet this year because it seems that every weekend there's something that has to that's happen a, that's it's, a crime man you, I, 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 we're going sa or saturday we're going oh, up saturday okay. for the first time it's hooked up uh it needs to be cleaned but it's hooked up and we're going to go up this yeah. weekend so now now, we were talking a little bit earlier um, about some of the things you have going on, uh, including Big Mixer tonight. Yeah, we have a mixer tonight at the um, Mojave Daily News. It starts at 530. Uh, taco night or fiesta night. We're going to have a taco truck there. El Palone's going to be there with his truck. Ah, um, there you go. Got some margaritas we're going to mix up. A few Coronas. It should be a lot of fun. So Very good. Very good. Uh, we have a mixer coming up here in a few weeks, mm -hmm. and we've been sitting around, you know, we can't agree on food and this and that. So mm -hmm. if you guys have any food suggestions, uh, tag me chat. or Christy in the chat because uh, we were thinking about going tacos and thinking about, you know, getting something catered in, whatever else. And we just keep going around in circles and circles. And Yeah, uh, it, it seemed pretty easy for us if we just bring in a taco truck. Mm -hmm. We actually uh, used El Palone at the BMX track a few about a month ago at a big state race and it was so good it's like oh we got to do this for our mixer yeah. so oh, yeah. um no it'll be pulled out front and get some tacos very cool some... so if you guys uh you know get a chance and you're uh involved get out go down and uh check out the paper mm -hmm. and you know obviously uh, you bring people in there you want them to see what you do uh see people in a different light so it's nice to come down and visit chit chat and all that stuff um yeah, I'm sure I'll be doing some uh, walkthroughs uh, yeah. and showing that we'll have the press up running tonight. So if people haven't actually seen a press ever run, how the paper actually goes out and gets printed at night. Uh, One of the coolest parts, seeing the press room. Yeah. yeah. Really yeah. Is. You know, it's funny. Uh, back in the day, all movies seemed like they opened with the press room, with the papers rolling off with the sure. headline. Yeah. Know, yeah. King yeah. Kong in New York or whatever. Yeah. You know, Everybody so. always wanted to run in and say, stop the presses. <laughs> you know, yeah. stop the presses. Like, yeah. <laughs> We don't do that very much, to be honest. No, I sure hope not. So um, what else you guys got going over there? I saw you have uh, you brought in some new bodies. Yeah, uh, we we brought in Tara Haywood from TV2. She's a part of our social media team now. Um, we are going to be doing a forum. Um, of course, we have the city councils um, up for election, mayoral candidates. Um, that's going to be April 30th. We're going to team with Murphy Broadcasting and do a forum at MCC. Um, I'm hoping to... Well, that wait. should be huge, huh? I, I think so. It's important. I yeah. mean, um, um, everyone should have an opportunity to be able to see the the um, um, candidates and, and what they stand for and what so they think. us here in town, we had kind of a unique deal where, uh, I mean, Mayor Brady seemed like he was kind of a fixture, right? Mm. Sure, you know, sure. Like he just kind of came with the building. Mm. No offense, Mayor Brady. <laughs> we appreciate you. Love uh, you, Mayor. <laughs> Love the trip. But, you know, it's just kind of like, oh, we have a mayor. We'll just mm -hmm. keep the mayor, you yeah. know, or whatever. And then all of a sudden it's like there's all this interest in being a mayor. And mm -hmm. then over the last couple of years, um, you know, I think everyone has taken a more, uh, you know, a bigger interest in their local politics mm -hmm. uh, after COVID and, and all that stuff. So Everyone needs to be involved with the politics. I mean, uh, if, if you don't get out and vote, if you don't get involved, then you're, you're doing a disservice not only to yourself but to your community. I, I mean, I really, I really believe that. Yeah, I think, you know, 
and I, I was probably guilty of it in a lot of ways as well, where pre-COVID, everything just kind of rolled along. You didn't think much of it. Mm-hmm. Well, now all of a sudden, mm-hmm. you had things and decisions and policies mm-hmm. that really affected your day-to-day. Mm-hmm. Um, and you we were actually pretty lucky in that we had reasonable people running mm-hmm. things, whereas sure. a lot of places didn't. So uh, pretty, uh, pretty interesting times. I really look forward to seeing that. Yeah, yeah. Again, we're gonna we're gonna live stream it. Um, working out the logistics of it Monday, actually, but but the intent is um, on um, on June thirtieth, June thirtieth, I believe it is. We will uh, live stream it. We're gonna have the uh, candidates for uh, city council as well as the mayoral candidates, and with Murphy Broadcasting, should be exciting. Very really. cool, very cool. We look forward to that. Um, so, what's the format? You said. Uh, you're going to have a lot of people in there. It's probably, you know, we all see the, uh, I always think of there's a Will Ferrell movie where he runs for president. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. Um, we're going to work that out again, Monday. But the ideal is that we will have some questions that pre uh, questions that we've already developed mm-hmm. uh, that we think are important to ask. Uh, we'll probably be reaching out to the community in advance. I don't necessarily like to have the questions coming, being brought that, the, the that evening in the yeah, moment. It's it super hectic trying to keep it professional um but we will be reaching out to the community via facebook our <laughs> newspaper um um to get questions that want to be asked as well yeah you um, get people trying to ask follow-up questions while they're still answering mm, the question and then <laughs> yeah there's there's time limits on it uh each each one you know you try to keep it as to where everybody has an equal amount of time so obviously there'll be time limits to answering questions uh rebuttals things of that nature we'll have timers there that will you know someone will be in charge of uh making sure that everybody follows the guidelines. So so not to move on from the event per se, but uh, kind of in the same line, um, you know, you guys have done a pretty nice transition into the uh, digital world of media. Mm-hmm. Um, I was out yesterday with your team uh, in Needles for mm-hmm. the state champion uh, Needles softball team. Uh, congratulations. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Um, to make them, sure yes. you guys go to your workouts. Don't mm-hmm. be slackers. <laughs> They're right next door at the CrossFit uh you know, they were over there training before we went out there. So I was like, really? oh, we should have yeah. done a CrossFit. I could have mm-hmm. saved the drive. Sure. You know? I'm so. sure Mitch would have enjoyed that too, having <laughs> yeah, it over to his place. Absolutely. So, so. Um, but you guys have made a pretty nice transition in the last probably year or two. Mm-hmm. Um, what's it been, you know, kind of coming from the, the old guard of the newspaper, stop the presses, all that, and integrating it to what is now the inevitable social media, digital. Yeah. Well, I it. mean, we're our, still our primary focus is news. You know, um, it, how we deliver it, it has to change uh, as time travel, uh, time, time travels, as time changes. If you figure out time travel, will you let me that know. That is what we're working on currently, yes. We're going to get uh, an almanac. I, we're going to go back. Yeah, I, I need, <laughs> I to, need to, I, I need to do that. I need some things I need to fix, yeah, you know what I mean? That, sure. you know, but no, um, it's been a transition. I, I think we were a little ahead of some of the older guard, to be honest. I mean, we, we started about four or five years ago, to be honest, uh, transitioning, um, the way we bring the news. Mm-hmm. Um, again, you know, uh, the, the paper is our core product, but, you know, to implement um, Facebook, you know, um, YouTube, things of that nature, uh, to bring the news to, let's face it, that's where our youth are at, you know what I mean? Uh, to get to get that information that they need to make them become a part of the we community. We always say that's where the youth are at, but well, if you walk up and you sit in our customer showroom, <laughs> there's typically a lot of older folks, yeah. and every one of them are on that phone. Yeah. Nowadays. Know? Yeah. Yeah, so I always, it's like a running gag on my social media, my mm-hmm. personal social media. Yeah. You know, these kids in their phones, and I take a picture of someone my grandma's age. Yeah. You know, on their phone, you know. The yeah, whole usually time. those that come with questions are, how do you? How do you do this? How do you do that? <laughs> you know, but, you know, no. As long as they, you know, and I laugh uh, a lot of times, you know, they're playing solitaire. You got to, you know. The whole world at your fingertips. You're playing solitaire. So. Do you have time to play solitaire? Uh, no, I do not. I, I don't either. I don't, you know, I don't even know how to play. So. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it's one of those things. Uh, there are a lot of luxuries that I don't have, and uh, mm-hmm. time is one of them. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, like you're talking, your plate gets full fast. And, yeah. Uh, seems like every time you get involved in something, it just expands to another thing. Sure, another thing. sure. I mean, so, uh, I've I've. You know, I've got a break right now, actually. I'm going on vacation in July. You know, I'm going, we're going to Hawaii. But uh, it's literally the last three months with, with everything that we've been involved with, with Traces. You know I took a vacation the day after the uh, I know. You, you, you ex-nade pretty quick there. Uh, that, was, that was good. So. Well-deserved yeah. vacation. Yeah. I think I even reached out to you at one point while you're like, well, I'm oh, on yeah. vacation. That's I go, right. well, I know that, but I'm still going to reach out. But, yeah. oh, you know, yeah. no. Um, you know, I've been pretty busy, but I've got a couple of weeks of to get prepared for vacation and, and 
want to get the boat out, of course, things like that, because we, we just have been so big. I mean, we raced last week, and my kid races BMX, of course. Mm-hmm. We were in a state race there a week before. It was a trip with the mayor. Uh, he had his annual ride, um, Old Farts Ride, which, you know, we, we keep quiet about what goes on there, but it was, it was a fun <laughs> ride. Um, and then, of course, you know, the week before was the uh, Aces Awards, uh, the Finley Aces Awards. So, yeah, it's just been one thing right after another, man. And, so we, we were just going over our marketing schedule for our – our world here at Finley, mm-hmm. and it was like, man, we got this. We got and then summer's kind of slow, and then we're like, shoot, it's not because then mm-hmm. falls here before you know it. You mm-hmm. got plan for those fall events at least a month out, and then you got for me football season, which is extremely busy. Sure, and then that partly's right into holidays, right into that, and then we're right back at it again. Yeah. You're like it, all right, here yeah, we go. <laughs> I know it's like uh, with Traces, you know, of course mm-hmm. the president of Traces, which is a nonprofit. Um, you know, we started in october is when we actually became a nonprofit, and then from there we quickly did the first golf tournament which mm-hmm. we were all involved with um very successful yeah you know for as fast as we put that together obviously we had a lot of great help mm-hmm. um but uh as fast as we put that together it was, it was pretty good to see it uh drive the, the interest it did in the money so. yeah it, quickly i mean uh there was some some people that got on board very quickly of course i think that first ace awards was a mm-hmm. good p- part of that two people could see what we were trying to do um, but yeah, the sponsors jumped on very quickly. And of course, I could go into uh, thanking all my sponsors again. But um, you know, we found a, found that that spot where we were at in November wasn't the best because of uh, the Matadors had their tournament with yeah. a big Calcutta. Um, so uh, Gary Reynolds said, "Let's let's move it to April." So we quickly turned around, did another golf tournament, and um, it was just as successful, if not more. Yeah. And uh, you know, right after that was the Ace Awards. So we were just project, project, project. So you know? sticking on that traces, um, obviously that thing is growing and expanding as mm-hmm. we go. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of our support is, you know, tied in with other people. Mm-hmm. There was just a golf tournament this last weekend for mm-hmm. the MCC. Sure, uh, sure. We were know, part of that as well at right. the Mojave Daily News as a sponsor for it. So And uh, you have some other things coming up for traces mm-hmm. to support, uh, you know, keeping the kids involved in town mm-hmm. and things like that. You're talking about a bingo night over at Anderson? Yes, yeah, bingo night. Uh, August 18th is, don't hold me to that, but I believe it's August 18th, third week of... Uh, Check of, Facebook. Uh, yeah, <laughs> third week of uh, August <laughs> is a uh, bingo night there to um, help support the youth in the community. Um, we're in talks we're, we're looking to try to do a youth, uh, football, um, camp. Um, Matt's, Matt is one of my, um, uh, board members is going to head that. And we're looking in, in, in August, September, possibly doing a youth, youth, uh, camp for football, which should be very exciting for this community. Yeah. So if you've been around Larry or myself, uh, you've probably heard us tell our stories many a times, <laughs> uh, but um, I would like to. Mine are getting bigger, you know, as I get older. Uh, I just keep adding in layers. You <laughs> yeah, know. yeah. Especially as my friends are moving on, they can't verify my BS. Right, so right. I'm like, yeah, yeah, this totally happened. Yeah. It was all me. So, yeah. Um, but the big part of how we got here was the impact that being able to participate in sports had in our lives. Yeah. Um, you know, for myself, it was moving from Pennsylvania at a young age, mm-hmm. um, you know, not really having any friends and. Mm-hmm. Baseball and basketball are where mm-hmm. I've, you know, I found my friendships that ended up yeah. getting me through moving and transition and kept me out of bad friendships, bad situations, mm-hmm. getting in trouble. Uh, I know you have a very similar. Experience. Yeah, I was, you know, I was an army brat. So I went to more schools and grades, literally. I, I, you know, a couple of them twice, but, uh, you know, I went there in fourth grade, go back in sixth yeah. at the same, you know, dad would be stationed at a different place. So sports was my opportunity to meet you know, and make friends. Mm-hmm. You go into a place, you're the only, you know, you're, I'm an only child. So go there and, you know, new kid on the block. Well, <laughs> you know, tough to make friends, but you go out and you throw a ball 85 miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, you know, all of a sudden you, you got friends, you know, you, know, you yeah. can run, run with a football or, or make a basket. You know, it was, that's how I made my friends. So um, not only that, some of the lifelong lessons I got from sports, that's, that's what's key to it. Um, that transitions over as, a, as an adult, you know, how you communicate with people, um, how you build bonds at work is, is yeah. a lot of the same things you do uh, in the youth um, as in, in uh, sports. You know, we so. had a really interesting day yesterday at football. Um, one of our coaches had double knee replacements. Mm-hmm. And um, we always talk about um, with the kids, what we provide and this, that and the other thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he sat there and he told us how much it meant knowing that those kids were waiting for him to come back. Mm-hmm in his recovery process, you know, mm-hmm. when he started to get down on it or be frustrated. Yeah. And it was very eye-opening to see 
um, you know, how much everyone means to one another in those in those types of environments. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, it's it's very fun to see. Yeah, you know, another thing that we we should shed light on is you know, in sports you deal with a lot of failure. Yes. And that is something that's multiple very multiple times a game usually. Yes, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's it's highs and lows, and being able to learn how to deal with those failures is going to help you in the future as and as an adult. Because let's face it, we we deal with failure every day, you know, and how you deal with failure is what makes who you are. You know, Absolutely. and I, I think that's a part of the sports aspect that, that that doesn't go noticed enough. Maybe is that what that can do, uh, how you in the future as an adult, how you deal with failure, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's been huge for for me. And it's been one of the big heavy messages that I have always mm-hmm. preached. And, um, you know, I tell you, uh, just and you would know as much as I, I mean, BMX is booming here in town. Yes. Um, yes. Got a lot of local baseball that's doing mm-hmm. very well. Uh, the football scene is busier than ever. We mm-hmm. just had some very high quality soccer teams. Yeah, um, basketball, basketball, um, soft. I mean, it really across the board, there's there's a lot of wins for this community, and it's great opportunities knowing that they're getting good coaching, good instruction, to have a real good foundational culture for this town. Going yeah, forward. I was I was really pleased to see the Bullhead City Little League do well. Yeah, they've they've struggled for years. I was some of those kids on that group. I got to coach uh, for like three or four years there mm-hmm. as well. It, which was nice to see that, you know, I, I kind of felt a little, of course, I wasn't out there coaching them now, but I felt a little <laughs> bit of that, that I had a little bit to do with that yeah. because I had them at, I, at I seven and eight, nine years old, you know. Yeah. and uh, um, So all those kids I coached at Firebird have, you know, gone into different sports, different schools, some have moved away, mm-hmm. and to see them do do well still makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. And I always take a little bit of credit for sure, it. Sure, so. sure. I mean, I, you know, I, I, you know, I so, might have something to do with something. You know, we're talking about telling, uh, telling old stories and uh, – since I don't think any of my friends are seeing this from uh, 1994 or 5 <laughs> right. or whatever it was, know. Um, we actually won a state championship for Bullhead City Little League in whatever year, though, 95 or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, deep down inside, I do have a little uh, like rooting interest for Bullhead Little League all the time. Yeah. You know, because yeah. they always talk about. You know, haven't done this, haven't done that. So well, I mean, look, I'm still alive. We won a state in 95. You yeah. Know, so yeah. It's, I can still go into my state. old high school and look up on the board and see, you know, MVP of 19, well, 1980, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just gave away my age a little man, bit Man, we're there, just but, going through the decades Yeah, here, man. holy They cow, fly yeah. fast, you know. I mean, it, <laughs> the we 80s talk, were cool. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, it's funny. You're right, Jeff. Uh, the 80s and 90s have become very popular. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, people are going, man, mm-hmm. this is not what we thought the future would be like. Yeah. Man, yeah. We really had it better in the 90s and 2000s. Yeah. Yeah. And now they're like, oh, we had it better in the 80s and 90s. Sure, and, yeah. sure. Especially with Top Gun. Do you see Top Gun? I haven't. I want to go though. I mean, I we you keep. Go, I haven't man. either. So yeah, yeah. I, you know, I was a big Top Gun fan. I come out in the '80s, of course. Yeah. You know, it was in my heyday, and, and uh, I was a big fan of it then. It's like I really want to go. We again, time. It's like, <laughs> when are we going to find time to go see it? You know. So. so, I can't remember. It was one of those days where it was hot and windy, and I was like, "We're not going out on the boat today." And so <laughs> we watched all of Stranger Things in one weekend <laughs> and Top Gun, and it was the most television I've watched. Yeah. In I, well, so I did sit up and watch on Netflix the last night. It was on Netflix, Top Gun, to oh, prep myself yeah. to go see it. So you know, I was the, told not to watch it on TV and that you should go into a movie theater to see that movie for Top Gun. Yeah, I would. It yeah, was, uh, it was. It was just because the sound effects and the big yeah. screen. And, I know. So, like, I mean, I have an obnoxiously gigantic television in my house, you know, <laughs> and uh, it's we all do. The same as a theater, right? <laughs> yeah, you know? like, yeah. It's just a different thing to it yeah you know, i yeah. got a comfy couch I got all this, but there's something different about going to no theater, fresh so. popcorn I mean, yeah. come on I know. right right yeah of course you can't get a cocktail well i guess you can at brendan they you sell can. beer yeah. they're yeah. not there yeah. yeah never mind uh, you know. yeah oh yeah so, so uh mix or aces community what other community things are you got coming up uh i know that <laughs> we are heavy in the youth sports <laughs> but i know you have I mean, you ride, you guys, being in the paper, you're kind of a central hub for a lot of events. Yeah, I mean, of course we have to get the, give the community what they're, um, you know, what's going on in the community. You know what I mean? And, and a lot of that we do as a sponsor. Um, the Fiesta for the Boys and Girls Clubs coming up in July. Um, we always sponsor Which is it. With, back. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah, essentially, yeah. I know that they tried to do it and this mm. and that, but with COVID and restrictions and. Yeah. I mean, it's been. It's been tough. Hiatus for it, two it, years. It's been tough for nonprofits. I mean, a lot of their stuff that um, they do for to to make money is, is um, we haven't been able to do. Of course, the the uh, 
you know, the casinos across the river are struggling with um, getting people to, to come to work. So that's affected a lot of the stuff that they've done for the nonprofits in the area. So, but I'm excited to see the Fiesta get back off the ground for Boys and Girls Club. Autumn does a great job there. Um, we're also a big part of Backpack Buddies. Uh, the Legacy Foundation does every year. Uh, that's in July. Um, Unfortunately, I've been a part of it for like seven, eight years as a coordinator. We're going on vacation when this actually oh, happens this year. So we plan that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that come off. Uh, I, I'm, I, I've got a few of them that's, uh, that are th saying that I did plan it, but I, I didn't yeah. know when we, we planned it back about a year ago. But um, but still, in Mojave Daily News will be there. You know, uh, my my staff will be there to we do underwear and, and socks every year. So we'll still be doing that like we do every year. Uh, I enjoy that. Um, to be honest, one of the things I enjoy most, most is the Backpack Buddies because it is directly uh, helping the youth in our community that are not necessarily as privileged as others, you know. Um, you know we, uh, we've we been involved the last few years, and it's one of the few things – I wouldn't say few things. It's one of the most popular things that we do where people volunteer to go back and do it again. They yes. are moved by it. They, mm. uh, you know, and um, so it – There's uh, always a moment during Backpack Buddies that really chokes you up because of uh, – how excited a kid can be, you know, yeah. to get, you know, a new backpack or new shoes. And, you know, it's just, it's like, it's so humbling, you know, and, uh, and, and makes you appreciate what not only Backpack Buddies is doing, but what everybody that becomes a part of that. Um, I, matter of fact, I think two years ago, I, I invited Rob to say, hey, you guys, when Rob was with you guys, of course, I said, you know, uh, you guys ought to be a part of Backpack Buddies. And you guys did last year. And yeah. I, I, it was, you know. I think almost everyone who participated um, volunteered to return, mm -hmm. and we had a lot of other people. Uh, if I understand correctly, I think they're going to have as much help as they can handle. Yeah, uh, it, it takes year, a lot. So. This year, it's actually going to be at the field house. They're moving uh, down to the field. Um, it's it's a it's a pretty daunting task to take on, you know. To be <laughs> honest, it's 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 got it's a lot of logistics, you know, yeah. along with the busing stuff of that nature. Um, you know, of course, they do a great job, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned, you know, the busing, the field house, you know, just a couple of things. I, I was really fascinated to find out, for one, there's a bus driver shortage. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Even even the city buses wow. are, 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 are struggling to run right yeah. now. They've, they've been uh, running two less of their routes right now because of uh, staffing issues. Well, I see on um, social media from time to time where, hey, this bus, bus route isn't running today mm -hmm. for a school. You yeah. Know? And I just can't imagine when I was a kid growing up and mm -hmm. just my bus not making it. Now, we didn't have the internet. I would have never known. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> you you need to have been out there going, where's my bus? Yeah, you know? my frozen driveway in Pennsylvania yeah. as a kid, bundled yeah. up, waiting for my bus and never showed up. No, know? no, but it's – it's everyone is struggling. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I've been pretty fortunate at the paper. We've got – I've got a very good core. Yeah. You know, and, and they've been there for a, a, a good deal of time. I mean, it's not unusual for I've been I've been there 19 years. It's not unusual for me to have employees anywhere from that, you know, five to 15 to 20, 25 years, you know. Yeah. Um, so not everyone has that, you know, of course, mm -hmm. COVID affected us like it did everybody. I mean, we we had to really button tighten up our belts and and uh, but we got through it. I mean, um, come out better on the other side and and. Um, excited what we can do in the future i really am i yeah. mean you know um, i am too and you know obviously uh we're we're all faced with new headaches mm -hmm. um you know we come out of one and into another um and unfortunately a lot of the same people are still heavily affected you know what i mean yeah yeah there's i mean it it, it, it affected you know small businesses extremely tough you know i mean many of them shut down mm -hmm. um s ones that did survive they're still trying to get out of that pandemic mode you know of, of um getting the people back into their built their, their uh, small businesses things of that nature so it, it's tough I mean we we took a hit like everybody else we're small you know believe it or not we are a small business I right. mean we're we're not over 100 employees we're, we're right around 50 employees and and uh, considered a small business so. you know and it's very um, depends on your perspective what you view a small business as I mean mm -hmm. at the end of the day I mean you're talking big businesses our targets Walmart's mm -hmm. Sure. You know, yeah. Big national chain things, mm -hmm. and um, even Finley the Auto Group is a pretty large business. Mm -hmm. But each one is independent. We operate independently. Sure. And um, you know, so we are about a hundred employees. Um, you know, the two locations, but we are local run whatever we don't if we don't have any you know outside world coming in to save us later right I mean? right so. i mean we're we're a, we're a family business you know i mean we're owned by the brim uh brim communications uh they own about nine newspapers 
Uh, we actually print for about four of them. Uh, we print for a lot of newspapers up in Utah, some of our sister companies. Um, out of necessity, really, it came down to during COVID. I mean, we were struggling uh, getting print work. Um, they couldn't find anybody to print in, in because of uh, shutdowns in Utah. So we worked our tails off to figure out how we we're going to do, do a weekly paper for them and get it up there. I mean, we ended up, you know, I did a lot of logistical work to get papers <laughs> sent out on Monday night now that make up, that get well, up there and get in there. That goes back to how you handle adversity. Mm -hmm. You know, do you try to sure. find solutions or do you give up? Do yeah. You, look, you know, yeah. do you look for help or do you, you know what I mean? Right, so. right. I mean, it was, uh, it was, it was, um, you know, I think it was. 20, January of 2020. I mean, right in the middle of it, and uh, we took it over and, and uh, have made it successful. Now that you know, uh, they're happy, we're happy, we're all, um, you know, getting the job done. Right. You know. Yep. That's uh, that's been, you know, kind of everybody's story is mm -hmm. trying to find a way to get out the other side, and all of a sudden you realize, oh, we survived. Mm -hmm. you sure. Know, we got sure. out of this thing. So mm -hmm. um, now we talked about a lot of community stuff. We talked about a lot of work stuff. Mm -hmm. I do know that. BMX is a little bit of all of that for you. Mm -hmm. Passion, family, community. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and it's uh, a lot of work. And it's a lot of work. <laughs> and it's a lot of traveling. I mean, um, I, I got to thank Anderson Ford. Uh, they, they stepped up this year and, and wanted to sponsor a team. Um, they're helping with some of the cost. Um, it, I mean, it's not cheap. I mean, you pay for rooms. You pay for the. Hey, the, I know. Listen, you, we, you, uh, we helped out. Uh, down there for many years yeah you guys did you guys have been a big part of bmx from day one um but yeah you start talking about you know nationals where it's 80 oh, bucks a day gosh. to race and the 120 130 bucks for a room so i had no idea how the like the format worked for mm -hmm. bmx mm -hmm. and i mean each thing you want to do is an entry and each mm -hmm. i mean holy there's state cow. races there's na national races if, if your kid's competitive you know you want to be in all of these you know um they give him the opportunity. My, my kid's competitive. He's he's gotten he's been doing it since he was eight, which is not that long. Seeing him, he's just only been like two and a half years. But he quickly went from novice to intermediate to expert, you know, and uh, and he's competitive nationally. So it, it's it's a lot of fun. I'm living vicariously through him a little yeah. bit, you know. I mean, that's what we do with our youth <laughs> and our kids. But it, it's it's a lot of fun, and and. You know, Mojave Daily News is supportive of, of what they're trying to do out there, too. The yeah. community out there is what's the best. Yeah. Um, you know, you go to a soccer game. I'm not going to badmouth any organization, but the parents can be over the top a little bit. You know what I mean? When it comes to their listen, kids. And Listen, I'm, a, I'm from the youth football world. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to talk about yeah. it. <laughs> but and I'm guilty as everyone. Sure. So. And, and, and me as well. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, I mean, as a coach, I've dealt with it. But. What I, what I enjoy about the BMX community is that they're all individuals out there competing, but they, but as a group, they are a team. Like yeah. if you're from the Bullhead race, uh, Colorado River BMX, you're a part of a group yeah. and that travels everywhere and, and everybody helps everybody. It's really neat. The kids to see, <laughs> to see a 16 year old, seven year old kid helping an eight year old or a seven year old on the track because they can't get up the hill and yeah. talking to them. That's that's the part that blows me away. I mean, and, and that's and that's what uh, Turnell Henry's done out there is yeah. he's really turned that track into something that. Turnell's um, kind of a local legend, although he's not local um, in that aspect. But as far as our local track, mm -hmm. um, the guy has had a huge impact, mm -hmm. and uh, he's one of our first Aces Award mm -hmm. winners uh, because of it. He, yeah. um, the guy just lives at that track. Yeah, he lives and dies BMX. He's a Hall of Famer. Uh, he's, you know, he's been around since the 80s, as, yeah. as have I, and uh, he's got some great stories. He's got a lot of knowledge, and he passes it along, you know, and he's doing a lot of great things. He's got some support from the county around here. The track looks amazing. Um, we have one of the premier, you know, it's done in clay with this, I, I forgot this tacky mud stuff that he does. I forgot what they call it now, but that yeah. the entire track is done like so Everybody you, loves to come here and race, you know. You go back to when... Um, Finley started getting involved in BMX. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had some kids in our building who mm -hmm. were very involved, and the track was complete disarray. You mm -hmm. had to go out of town to race. Mm -hmm. This one down, nobody would come here basically. Right, you know. And now to have a well run, uh, you know, well orchestrated track, mm -hmm. you know, nice facility, plenty of space, all the whatever sure. you call it. Mm -hmm. fancy. Parking, you got, yeah. we've got more parking coming in. They're actually going to expand it even more. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited about it for the community. I really am, you know. And it's only been a few years, so mm -hmm. a great job to Tunnell and everybody mm -hmm. involved sure. there. And, of course, mm -hmm. if you don't have, you know, kids that want to do it, there's mm -hmm. there's no reason to do it. So uh, mm -hmm. very cool. Yeah. Um, 
I think uh, I'm gonna let you go, man. Um, Already? You that, that was fast. <laughs> well, thirty minutes. Yeah. Yeah, thirty minutes. Listen, you and me could talk. Right. Right. To we no already, end. Yeah. So between the two of us, we could sit here all day. We'd, we just bring us subjects, Jeff. We'll just talk all day, all day long. long. Yeah. I know. I'm ready. One, um, one more thing. Uh, we do have a, a special section coming out for 4th of July. It's the Veterans uh, Special Section. It's a great um, thing to get into. 200 bucks, you can get a full page of ad. Got to push that a little bit, man. We, we love it. Um, so, love our uh, veterans, you know. So w one more time, what is it? It's for 4th of July. It's, 4th of July comes out. It's a veterans uh, magazine. Carrie, uh, Carrie it, loves when I do this. Uh, uh, but you sign us up for one. We'll we'll do one. Tony uh, Tony supports a lot of veteran groups. Yeah. Um, we always have and tried, but he um, he himself is a veteran. And uh, no, you, get, no, you I, get us in there and, you know. Appreciate that. Sorry, yeah, Carrie. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Kerry. I just scored you one. So, yeah. yeah. First deal. I'll Tony, get an angry text. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> yeah, to, Tony. Uh, you mentioned Tony. Tony's on my traces board. I really appreciate him coming on board. Um, uh, great fit. Great fit for yep. us. So, uh, yep. I know he wants to get involved in the community. Too, so. He uh, he is dove right in. So mm -hmm. we are uh, we're happy to have him. And so he's actually up there meeting with uh, Jamal today. Mm -hmm. Jamal swinging through town. I think you've met Jamal sure. also. So mm -hmm. we've uh, we've been very fortunate to have a lot of great folks come through here. So. Yeah. Well, thank you, buddy. Appreciate Always a it. Pleasure. Yeah, you too. We'll do something like this again soon. I'm sure we'll we will. Wild going on in no time. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks, Larry. Thank you, guys.